Before I get into talking about the jointer and my lack of progress on it lately, I want to talk about the last video that I posted on here about the air cleaner in particular. Lots of nice compliments about the shop and what I've done so far. And thank you for that. Um, quite a number of comments on the um, air cleaner idea about putting the motor assembly or the fan assembly outside. And um, you hear that all the time whenever something like that comes up. Like I got the same, basically the same comments about putting the compressor outside. And I'm sure if I had a dust collector in here, I would get the same comments about putting that outside. It's way, it's very difficult to do that in a place that's already existing and um, you don't want to make any changes to the building envelope per se. Like I spent a lot of time on the outside here getting this redone. I re-insulated it and uh, resided it and all that made it look good because it didn't look very good when I moved here as uh, the long uh, time followers would know. But uh, it'd be a different thing if you had a situation where you could build on like a, just a lean-to type thing. And I've seen this done before. Other people have done it where like say if I were to do it out on the side here, I go out and I pour a concrete base and then I build walls that are up against the side of this and build a little shed roof on there. And then I would put, say, my compressor out there, and I could put the air cleaner out there, and then run the uh, the things that have to go through the wall within that space. See, that'd be a different thing. That'd be like building something on. That's something that I don't want to get into. As far as putting something outside on its own and just building some kind of little box for it to go in or something, that's not what I want to do. Um, every place where something goes through the wall here, you're going through, okay, I've got plywood on the outside, and then there's an uh, inch and a half of insulation, foam insulation, and then behind that there's OSB, and then behind the OSB there's wall studs, of course, and in between the wall studs there is uh, bat insulation, six inch bat insulation, and then on the inside there's drywall, and uh, of course, behind the drywall, there's vapor barrier, it's plastic. So you're gonna penetrate all that stuff and you're gonna make a big mess of it. It has to be uh, weather tight on the outside. And here where I live, the weather can get pretty brutal, blows pretty hard sometimes. We get some storms and in the winter it snows and it ices up and all that stuff. So it really has to be robustly done to withstand this, you know, these conditions. The only, like I said, the only time that I would think about doing something like that would be if I could build something on. That's definitely not what I want to do here with this. Uh, like I got no space beside it here. There's definitely no space on this side because this is where my house is. Behind is not practical, but that's where the shed is. And out on front is the front of my property. It's the driveway right there. I can't like <clears throat> put a little box on the front of my shop like that to put the air cleaner in. Okay, to talk about my jointer, I'm gonna have to clean some of it off. <laughs> That's the problem with those horizontal surfaces. I keep telling you, if you have them, you're gonna load it up with junk. Here I even got my wooden dice here, which I haven't put back on my bench because I'm not sure that I'm going to. I may build a new one. But that's, uh, that's another story altogether. Uh, some of this stuff I could put away, obviously. But for now, I'm just going to move it all over to the bench. Where's your air cleaner now when you need it? Okay, so it's cleaned off. And now I can, talk, I can properly talk about it. Uh, what stalled me out on this? Well, there were a couple of things. Uh, the main thing that stalled me out was I kind of got a little bit burned out on it and I had some other things that I had to get done. So 
I put this off and put it off and put it off and then eventually <laughs> you put it off enough you know your emphasis or your focus kind of goes away on it but um, that's the way that I am though I've always been that way I eventually almost always I would say if I had to give it a percentage I would say it'd be maybe 95 maybe 96 like 96 percent of the projects that I start I actually finish to some degree of satisfaction for me um, I've got numerous examples of things that I've started and uh, got halfway through or part of the way through and then stalled out on and started up again and eventually finished it and I'm standing right in front of probably one of the bigger examples out here anyway I've got way bigger examples in you know other parts of my life but this bandsaw it took me a long time to finish it I started it and uh, I got a lot done all in one go type thing and then I kind of lost interest in it for more than a year so it just sat in my old workshop uh, it sat there collecting dust and then I picked it up again and I finished it so that's a good example right there this will not be the same I'm going to finish this fairly soon but there are a couple things that I have to decide on first of all I'm having a problem with the steel that I have for the top here it is not as flat as it really should be for like a precision machine I, I and my my uh, definition of a woodworking tools precision is pretty lax actually I don't need it to be uh, something I said it before it doesn't have to you know I don't have to use it to plain cylinder heads flat or anything like that but this is uh, is pretty bad the steel that I use is hot rolled and I really should have not used it for this I should have went and got a piece of cold rolled steel and that would have been a lot flatter and I could you know I could work with that a lot easier with this the last time I was working on it I was trying to flatten this or straighten it out and what I was doing was I was checking with a straight edge and I was shimming it up in different places and I was recording some of that to make a video of the next video in the build series so I may be putting some of that in here right now you might be watching some of that the other major uh, thing and, and I don't even know if I have to do it but immediately, almost immediately after I got this in feed side here with the inclined plane uh, finished I determined that it would be better if I had have made that not as steep right now it's at 45 degrees and that's quite steep and looking on my SketchUp model I thought it would be good but the problem with that uh, ramp being that steep is the lack of support it has over the full length and if I were to make the ramp uh, shallower so that it starts up near the cutter head and goes right to the back of the machine that would actually well it would be full support along the whole thing rather than partial support say near the middle the reason why I think that that's a problem is the like the overall size of this thing the length of it here when I push down on the back here there's some give that I don't like and I'm sure that I could add more uh, wood in there to beef it up so that it would be less likely to do that but at the same time <laughs> I just don't think that it's strong enough I, I don't have any confidence in it as it is right now so I've been thinking about changing that part and uh, that's not a major thing to do it's just something that I have to come out here one day and do the other thing about changing it though is that while I was thinking about this ramp and uh, how steep it is 
I was also thinking about the mechanism that I was going to use to raise and lower the end feed table here. And I was going to use the, basically the same thing as I have my router lift. It's just another inclined plane driven by a crank on the side here. And then I got to thinking that if I did make that ramp, this internal ramp, uh, longer, I could just put the crank on the end here and drive this infeed table up and down that ramp with that. So it would be very simple. It would be a lot simpler <laughs> than it is right now. But like I say, I have to... I have to do it. That's all. I have to take the time out of what I'm what else I'm doing because you know, I started this project as a kind of a you know, a gap filler type thing, something that I could do bits and pieces of. And uh, as usual, when I started building it, I got very enthusiastic about, you know, getting into it because I was excited about, you know, getting it uh, going. But then when that uh, break, I guess you could say, happened, my enthusiasm tailed off like it does. And I'm sure everybody feels the same thing. And then the problems that I have here, especially with the steel, because that's, a, that's, a, that's something that really bothers me. I really want to be able to whip this steel that I have here in shape, but it will not go. I've taken the uh, outfeed side piece off. I've put it down on the floor. I've put blocks underneath it. I've got the rubber mallet to try to pound it a bit flatter. I've had the straight edge. I'm like, I spent hours on this single piece here trying to straighten it out. It's just not worth it. I would be better off to either go get the steel that I want, or even I have a piece of aluminum that's one eighth of an inch thick in my shed that is way flatter than this that I could use for this. But the problem with aluminum is it's not as durable as steel. I've had comments about using uh, something like Formica or, um, or just wood, actually plywood. Formica will, is a good surface, but it wears. Like I had my table saw before and the sliding table on the side was Formica and there were visible grooves worn in the, side, in the surface of it. So it really doesn't take long when you're pushing something down against it to wear grooves in that material. It just seems very tough and very hard when you're handling it. Just it doesn't seem like it would do that like quickly, but it didn't take any longer than about a year of use on my old table saw when that was starting to happen. Okay, I'm back again at the blower over here to talk just a few seconds more and then I'm gonna wrap this one up. A um, Couple of comments about using a different blower, uh, like a slower motor with a bigger impeller. And um, I actually have one. I have one that spins half as fast as this. The, the motor is more powerful though, so it will use more electricity, which is not really a big deal for this because it's not running continuously. Uh, but the impeller, I don't have as much faith in the impeller. It's not as well made as this one. It's not as precisely made as this one. This one is really good for what it is anyway, and it's really well balanced. So. And like I said, I've got this made, like the housing is all done here. I just need to make minimal changes to that for it to work for what I need to do. So I was out in my shed this morning and I found this, of course, finding it <laughs> is not the right word. Uh, it's from, it's originally from my old dust collector and I took it from that and I put it onto my planer cart that had the, uh, well, it had this on there that went down through. I'll put a picture on the screen if I can find one. But otherwise, I'll put a link to the actual project in the description. You can go back and see how bad my videos were back in the day. <laughs> anyway, so this would be the perfect thing to go from the inlet to the plenum because no, this will carry no vibration. This is perfect, flexible uh, union here. It's got the wire inside so it won't collapse also. I don't like it being uh, convoluted like this because that slows down the airflow, but I think I've got airflow to throw away with this blower. 
And that was the other thing. Um, someone uh, made a comment about slowing it down. I don't want to slow it down. I want to turn this thing on and about 20 seconds later to start seeing the air clear up immediately after running the saw on a heavy cut, you know, making smoke inside the shop. I want it to clean the air that fast. I don't want to be running this thing all the time. I want it to quickly clean it. Someone else made a comment about flushing the toilet and that is exactly right, right there. This thing flushes the toilet. You turn it on and it gives a big swirl. It cleans all the <laughs> I'm like one of those beetles that falls on its back. I can't get up. <laughs>